Welcome to our presentation. We are the Dark Room Collective Group by Will, Gio, Colin, and Nacho. A little bit of context behind our movement is it was uh, kind of in the post-civil rights uh, movement era. Um, DRC was used as a means of escape and kind of like a safe haven for African-American poets during uh, the, like I said, post-civil rights movement. It was a kind of contemporary art area where um, poets would express how they were feeling and write poems without any judgment um, through relation to each other. Um, the Dark Room Collective was a renowned artistic and lit literary community founded in 1988 in Boston. Uh, it was comprising of African-American writers and artists. The collective aimed to provide a supportive space for emerging Black creatives. Um, they engaged in collaborations, combining poetry, spoken word, music, visual arts, and performance. The Dark Room Collective published a literary magazine, um, The Dark Room, showcasing unconventional work that explored themes of race, identity, and social justice. Uh, though the collective disbanded in the late 1990s, their impact remains uh, influential, inspiring marginalized voices in the arts. Gwyneth B. Bennett was born in 1812 and she attended Columbia University. She then went to Howard after her father passed away. She began publishing her poems in a newspaper she was an editor in. Much of her poems were produced in the 1920s where she produced over 20 poems. Much of her work was destroyed in two house fires, one of them at her mother-in-law's home in 1926 and the other at her stepdaughter's home in the early 1980s. She created a support group for young writers in Harlem, which included Langston Hughes and Du Bois. Bennett's works made her a key figure in the Harlem Renaissance. She emphasized Harlem culture along with African-American values and racial pride. This is a poem called Fantasy by Gwyneth B. Bennett. I sailed in my dreams to the land of the night where you were the dusk-eyed queen and there in the paler of the moon-veiled light the loveliest things were seen. A slim-necked peacock slaughtered there in a garden of lavender hues and you were strange with your purple hair as you sat in your amethyst chair with your feet in your hathic shoes. Oh, the moon gave a blushes light through the trees in the land of dreams and night, I stood behind a bush of yellow green and whistled a song to a dark haired queen. Um, <clears throat> so the next poet is uh, Toy Derricott. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, so Toy Derricott was born on April 12th, 1941 in uh, Hamtramck, Michigan. Uh, it was, she was a, it was a small working class city near Detroit, and she grew up in a racially segregated community. Derricott attended Wayne State University in Detroit and received a Bachelor's of Arts degree in special education. And later, she pursued a Master's of Arts degree in English from NYU. Later on, she founded Kaveh Kahneman in 1996. She was a co-founder of Kaveh Kahneman, along with poet Cornelius Eady. And Kavikon is a nonprofit organization that supports and promotes African American poetry. It offers writing retreats, supports, and promotes African American poetry. And uh, it gives a wide variety of workshops and other opportunities for African American poets to develop their craft. For her overall poetry career, she has published several collections of poetry, including The Empress of the Death House in 1978, Natural Birth in 1983. Um, tender in 1997 and The Undertaker's Daughter in 2011. Her work often explores themes of identity, race, gender, and family. And Derricotte's poetry is known for its raw emotion, vivid imagery, and unflinching honesty. And later on, her awards include contributions to literary have been recognized throughout numerous awards and honors. She received the Lucille Medwick Memorial Award from the Poetry Society of America, the Patterson 
Poetry Prize and the Penn Volecker Award for Poetry, among others. And in 2012, she was elected the Chancellor of the Academy of American Poets. Will Alexander is an American poet, essayist, novelist, and visual artist. Uh, he was born on December 17th, 1948 in Los Angeles, California. Uh, he is known for his experimental and innovative approach to poetry. He blends his various influence, including jazz and African mythology. Uh, his work often explored themes of spiritually, spirituality, history, and the intersection of different cultures. Some of his notable poetry collections include Vertical Rainbow Climber in 2005, and then Compression and Purity to, in 2011. And then uh, he also published es essays and prose works, such as Towards the Primavera Lightning Field in 1998 and Sign and Magnet Hoofbeat in 2013. His unique writing style and lyrical experimentation have earned him critical acclaim and numerous awards, including the Jackson Poetry Prize in 2016. The next and last poet we have is Melvin Dixon. Melvin Dixon was an African-American poet, essayist, and scholar. He was born in Stamford, Connecticut, and throughout his entire career, Dixon's work explored themes of identity, sexuality, race, and the experience of living with AIDS. Dixon received his bachelor's degrees from Wesleyan University in 1972 and went on to earn a master's degree in fine arts and from Brown University in 1974. Throughout his career, Dixon's writing focused on addressing social and political issues affecting marginalized communities, particularly the experiences of Black gay men. His poetry often blended personal experiences, historical narratives, and social commentary. In addition to his poetry, Dixon also wrote essays and literary criticism. One of his poems here that we have on the screen is called Heartbeats. Um, Heartbeats by Melvin Dixon is an emotional poem that explores the progression of a person's deteriorating health and their struggle with a terminal illness, likely AIDS. The poem presents a series of fragmented thoughts and instructions reflecting the speaker's attempt to cope with their condition and maintain control of their life overall. The poem begins with a list of activities associated with well-being, such as exercise, maintaining appearance, and using the steam room. Then it transitions to remind the loved ones to stay connected and engaged in self-care. So it's talking to the reader. Um, so the way that I'd say that our movement, the Darkroom Collective, ties with our group poem that we wrote, our Pichacucha, is it really talks about identity and cultural heritage, which is a big thing when you're talking about the Darkroom Collective. The poets of the Darkroom Collective often explored issues of identity, uh, particularly the experiences of, Af of being African-American and uh, the, the major complexities of cultural heritage. Another thing that we bring to light in our Pichacucha is history and memory. History played a significant role in the poetry of the Darkroom Collective. And, you know, we're talking about the history of Los Angeles, uh, what we find good, what we find bad about it. And that's another thing that ties into cultural heritage and identity, like identifying ourselves with the city and our experiences. This is a poem by a famous poet during the Darkroom Collective, Conte Calm. Locked arm in arm, they cross the way, the black boy and the white, the golden splendor of the day, the stable pride of the night. From lowered blinds, the dark folk stare and hear the fair folk talk. Ingdent that these two should dare in unison to walk, oblivious to look and word, they pass and see no wonder that light brilliant as a sword should blaze the path of thunder. And this is our Zuhitsu. This is a writing exercise for you guys to do and spend about two minutes on each topic. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you have a great day.